in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Status is changing, it's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. Can you prophesy with me? I know. Status is changing. Your status is changing. Status is changing. There's no more decline. No more decline. We're on our way. I'm on my way to better days. For the last time, just prophesy. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. Praise the Lord. We bless God for what He's doing in this place. I welcome everyone. May God bless and honor you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Matthew 13. We're supposed to start a new series. Um, I don't know how far we can go in it. But if we're unable to take it tonight, no problem. We're taking a series on the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13 from verse 10. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest unto them in parables? Verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, say it is given unto me, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. He said, but unto them it is not given. Jesus is speaking to disciples and he says, because you have chosen to walk with me, it is given unto you. In other words, access has been granted unto you. Not just to know. The word know there is the same word that is used when it refers to a man knowing a woman. It's not just talking of head knowledge. Are you following me now? And Abraham knew his wife. So it is given unto you to come into this realm where you can know, comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I began to share with us, I think over the last two weeks, how that the concept of dominion, please follow me. Dominion is not just a word that refers to authority by claiming. Uh -uh. There are certain revelations and keys that bring a man by default into this realm, dominion. So, dominion is the resultant effect of certain things at work, certain keys. Hallelujah. So, a lot of people talk about dominion and then we talk about dominion in terms of authority, delegated power. And we just believe you 
claim it and you say, I'm walking in dominion. No, it doesn't happen that way. There is an understanding of the structure of the kingdom. Please follow me. When you come into the comprehension of that structure of the kingdom and the keys that release the laws of the spirit to walk, then you will walk in dominion. Say amen. Hallelujah. And in the last two weeks, we've been examining a number of things. We touched a bit last week on transformation. I shared last week on the laws of dominion. We talked about the laws of territory. How that dominion is territorial. Dominion is not just a vague terminology that means just go anywhere and rule and reign. Uh -uh. Dominion is territorial. Hallelujah. How many of you remember? And then we spoke about the law of exchange. It's a powerful spiritual law. You neglect that law at your own detriment. So a rich man can exchange his fertility for money hallelujah someone else can exchange his um the the peace of a land like bishop was sharing for their personal gains the law of exchange a very very powerful law hallelujah praise the lord so we'll look a bit um into the concept of mysteries shiba balaposa what is a mystery Let's just get that background. If we cannot talk about, let me just give us the background and then, because my, my central teaching tonight really is, is on the ecclesia, the church. I'm going to be teaching on the church, but I just want to, by way of introduction, just touch a bit on the mystery. Number one, a mystery is anything that is kept secret or remains unexplained or unknown. That's the first definition. A mystery is anything that is kept secret. Anything that is kept secret. Please follow me tonight. Over the next few weeks, many of you are going to be walking in mantles of dominion. You, this is not about receive it, take it. No. It's about a revelation bringing you into an experience. You will not even know that it has started working. Hallelujah. It's a byproduct of understanding. The Bible says, and Jesus opened up their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said, ye err, not knowing the scriptures. Mm. May God grant us grace. There is what you can know that will make you a wonder there is what you can know listen all men are equal in christ but understanding has separated men into cadres, such that what is possible for one may not be possible for the other this is the distinguishing feature this is the mark of this ecclesia of god the church i'm going to come there but i want us to understand that a mystery is anything that is kept secret or remains unexplained or unknown. Number two, a mystery is any truth that is unknowable except by divine revelation. A mystery is any truth that is unknown. That means it cannot be known with intellectualism. It cannot be found with just philosophies and people's ideologies. A mystery is a truth that is unknowable except by divine revelation. Eli who began to speak in Job 32 and verse 8, he said, but there is a spirit in man. When all the elders came and began to, to debate among themselves in an attempt to explain the reason for the predicament of Job. I hope you understand that the meeting between the sons of God and Lucifer coming in the midst of them was a privileged information that was given by the writer to the readers. Those who were existing in that day did not know that such a meeting had happened. So they were judging on the strength of their knowledge. The Bible says at the predicament of Job, all of the great men that represented different spheres of influence, they came together and they were so shocked at the predicament of Job. The Bible says they were silent for seven days. 
reasoning among themselves stretching their intellectualism from end to end in an attempt to find what cause out of the archives of the knowledge they had known that was responsible for wealth and poverty they kept stretching their minds to see and understand what would have been responsible for this man's predicament and then Elihu, the youngest of them, kept quiet and allowed them to keep articulating themselves. And Elihu said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because I was young. And I thought that you people are old and so you will speak. There are certain things that wisdom and age cannot teach. He said, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration, the breathing of that spirit upon men can grant unto them understanding. Hallelujah. So there are certain things you can know without experience. It's the illumination of the spirit. And we call that mysteries. This is my definition of a mystery. Number three. This is what I call a mystery. A mystery, a mystery is, or mysteries are spiritual codes. C-O-D-E-S mysteries are spiritual codes that activate the operation of the laws and systems of God this is my definition of a mystery that a mystery is a spiritual code that activates the operation and the systems of God and by extension activates the operations in the spirit realm mysteries are spiritual codes every king in ancient time every kingdom follow me please in ancient time became great on the strength of the mysteries that the kings had are you following me now so mysteries are spiritual codes when understood they grant access to operating and activating certain laws in the spirit when i started studying on this series i was shocked to find out how many mysteries there are in the kingdom say after me this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries hallelujah a kingdom of mysteries the realm of darkness the kingdom of darkness the satanic kingdom thrives and prevails on the strength of mysteries are you following me now that's why when we find somebody there's a terminology we use we call them secret societies not public societies is that true secret societies because you just see the manifestation of what they do the, the dynamics of their operation is a mystery that is revealed only to a, 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 what do I call it now? A brotherhood, a sect of certain people who have pledged their fraternity with that group or that cult. And so you come and pledge your fraternity and to the extent to which the leaders are satisfied with your allegiance, they open you up to certain mysteries and the mysteries determine your ranking are you getting my point now so that if you saw a man who was maybe a herbalist and all of that he's only a herbalist at that level on the strength of the mysteries that were revealed to him is that true when matters go bad he will go to in quote what he will call another higher person and the difference between two of them is the mystery that has been conceived. In the Nigerian army, the ranking of the military is according to the secrets of the, the mysteries, the code of operation. Are you getting me? That governs war and, and, and the art of military intelligence and all of that. So when they are about to promote another person, there is a special place where they train only people who attain certain ranks. And secrets are committed unto them. Are you getting me now? It is on the strength of this secret that they are given certain ranks. So that the limitation of the lower soldier does not affect the intelligence of the higher one. Everybody say mysteries. Your dominion in this kingdom 
lies on the strength of your understanding. Listen, I love Daniel. The Bible says in Babylon, they were selected. Is that true? A number of people were selected and Daniel was selected. They were selected to be taught mysteries. Mysteries as regards the Babylonian worship. Hallelujah. Daniel, Shadrach, Abednego, all of these boys, they were selected and they took them to a special school where they taught them the science of the Babylonians, where they taught them the oracles and the ordinances, the covenants that made Babylon strong. And the Bible says when they were tested, Daniel was found 10 times better. But that's not the point. Daniel had an extra advantage they did not know. So there was a time they saw a mystery. Look, Daniel bombarded Babylon with all kinds of mysteries. Hidden truths. The secret that can make animals not to touch a man. It was not known to anybody. Daniel entered the lion's den and reproduced Eden in that lion's den. Hallelujah. When Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, they went and they brought all of, they made a feast to the God of gold and of silver and all of that. It was the custom of kings that when they spoiled any nation, they would hold a feast to display their royalty and their strength. And in doing that, they will bring all of the spoils that they had gotten and celebrate and thank the God that kept his covenant with them. Hallelujah. And while they were taking of the cups that were made for the temple of the Lord, a handwriting, everybody say a mystery. A mystery was written. It was a language that did not belong to the earth realm. And all the sorcerers and the necromancers and the people who taught Daniel, they came with their advanced knowledge and they cracked all the codes and they could not find out. And they said, there is a man. Mm. There is a man. To this man has been given the understanding. And Daniel looked and they wanted to bless Daniel with rewards. Daniel said, keep your reward. Let me unlock this thing to you. Mene, mene tekel ufesen. Oh king, you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. This day, your kingdom will be taken from you. Everybody say mysteries. Dominion on the strength of mysteries. There is something you will know that will open your eyes to the patterns that are happening in your family. And it no longer becomes a surprise. When men are running, you are the champion that will step in and say, Satan, you can deceive others. I know you. You know I know you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mysteries. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. Are you getting blessed tonight? Psalm 25, verse 14. Please open your heart, not just to listen, but to receive. I told you last week, if you are not changed, then we are wasting our time. Psalm 45, verse 14. The secret of the Lord, you can, you can just read it, it's projected. The secret of the Lord. Everybody, the secret of who? So the Lord has secrets. Is that true? The secrets of the Lord. Listen. Do you know? Let me give you a little background to shock you. I want to digress a bit. I will still talk about it. Do you know the name Satan and the name devil is not Lucifer's name? Are you aware that devil is a generic name? Satan means the accuser. Is that true? That's what it means. The Bible tells us in Revelation, that old serpent, even Satan, the devil, the accuser. That's why the Bible said, they shall cast out devils. S. In my name, they shall cast out devils. The one we call Satan, his original name as given by God is Lucifer. And you know the meaning of Lucifer? The light bearer, son of the morning. Are you seeing what made Satan very intelligent? Satan was the light bearer. He was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom. The light bearer. So the one third of the angels that were given to him. I hope you know the first person to be in Eden was Satan. Not Adam.
Satan had known Eden. Oh yes. Together with the angels. The ones we call... Ah, yeah. Help me, oh God. Can we continue? Do you realize that angels... Let me shock you. Angels do not have wings. I hope you know. See, angels are like humans. They do not have wings. It is the cherubims and the seraphs that have wings. Is it not in your Bible? Did you ever, in fact, the Bible puts it this way, that when angels come, be careful, you can even confuse angels and people. He said, be good to others, for in this, some of you have entertained angels unaware. Are you getting my point now? Angels can eat human food. Abraham and his wife, when the angels came, did they not cook for them? Did they eat it? The Bible says that they ate the angels' food manna from heaven is that true i'm not teaching you heresy all of this is in your bible praise the lord in fact let me show you something the bible says when the angel appeared to mary mary was not shocked at the angel it was the salutation the message that surprised her not the angel she looked at him and said oh god what kind of salutation is this in other words, when the angel appeared to Zechariah, Zechariah, listen, Zechariah was not afraid in terms of the angel. No. When he doubted him, he said, I am Gabriel. Let me tell you something that will interest you. I hope you know, I spoke a bit two weeks ago on forbidden knowledge. Remember our teaching of, for, of forbidden knowledge? There are certain knowledge that God did not want this, his ecclesia to know. That was the knowledge Adam did not know. I hope you know Lucifer was created. Is that true? Lucifer was created. When Lucifer was created, his place of habitation was Eden. Follow me. Let me just clear this once and for all. The way some of you are looking at me, guy, I don't agree. Ezekiel 28. This is Bible studies. Ezekiel 28. Uh-uh. It was a prophetic word about the king of Tyre. That was Satan. As the earthly ruler. Satan was the earthly ruler before Adam. It was the judgment of Satan that led to the fall of Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was dark and void and formless and the waters you know why because i will show you that the earth was designed to be suspended on waters the pillars of the earth passed down through the waters god was speaking to job when job summoned god the bible tells us in job 38 they began a conversation and god said hold on job where were you ah, okay let's just finish this one what was that what was i going to check See, we are talking about something. I, I want to conserve time. You are the ones who are pushing me into this thing now. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 11, Son of man, take up a lamentation about the king of Tyre. Satan was the real king of Tyre. And say unto him, thou, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, if you are a Christian, read. One to read. Thou has been where? Whose garden? Thou has been there. Thou has been there. He said, every precious stone, business people, precious stone, Satan knows where gold is. He knows where silver is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh yes, he knows. That's why he can enrich any man that fraternizes. Let me tell you something. Satan and demons have the advantage of experience. They have been here for a long time. Revelation calls him that old serpent. Thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, and so on and so forth, and gold. He said the workmanship, all right, of thy tablets and of thy parts was prepared in thee, in the day that you were 
there was a day he was created he was not created as satan he was created as <laughs> that means there was a story before genesis chapter one it was that story that was enshrined in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil i told you in eden you don't eat to feel hunger you eat to get understanding and impartation are you getting me now the judgment of lucifer after his rebellion was what led to genesis 1 verse 2 and then what you see as genesis 1 verse 3 was the recreation and elohim said light return as you were and there was light and then there was a creation again listen i will show you that the creation in genesis 1 there was another creation before then do you want me to show you follow me job 38 you will see that there was another that was the cre in fact it was more detailed than genesis 1 it was that creation that describes how the earth was made and you will see how flawed science is follow me we have come to the end of ourselves take over jehovah we have touched the end of our hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of our are you there let's hurry up we really have to save time job 38 the Lord is speaking to Job now in the height of his predicament. Are you there? Then the Lord answered Job, I'm going to be very fast, out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Guard up your loins. He was challenging Job. Please help me with the handkerchief. Guard up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and thou answer me. Where was thou? Listen, this is God challenging Job. Question one where was thou ah people are not following let's hurry up we have to save time verse 4 where was thou when i laid what so the earth that science tells us is revolving in the air god says far 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 the earth has foundations there was a time when i designed the foundations of the earth and before that I'm going to show you that the concept of the son of God is not a new testament concept thank you are you there verse 5 or declare if thou hast understanding verse 5 who had laid the measures of it this was specific architecture happening when the earth was being designed are you getting me now before the earth i hope you know the earth was designed before man as we know adam was there and before adam was there there were already other people you will see them now are you ready verse 6 whereupon are his foundations fastened or who had laid his cornerstones seven please if you are a christian one to go when the morning star sang thanksgiving that the when you lay foundation don't you do thanksgiving that was what the, the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. It's in your Bible that there was a time when the foundations of the earth were laid. No man was there. No devil of darkness. All the men, the kings of the earth. Are you now seeing the arrogance of Psalm 24? many kings were standing to say we know so much about the earth and god said come on now job tell me where were you this is god challenging the man he created there are some revelations that when you have you will worship god in spirit and in truth you see how much is an insult to now believe that the opposite of god is lucifer God was God. One day he thought of creating a light bearer called Lucifer. See, these are the secrets that when you know to cast out devils become easy. Because you know that you are not confronting an enemy of God like, like another strength. Uh-uh. 
when you see spirits manifesting you tell them forget this i have knowledge already i've eaten of the tree of life there is something that has given me knowledge listen some of this knowledge were part of the forbidden knowledge that the fallen angels began to tell the daughters of men and it tripped them and they started following the angels and they had intercourse and gave birth to giants you think the daughters would just if the angels were strange wouldn't the daughters of men run away look if there is an angel with one eye here and two wings and he says sweetheart i just decided for me will you come to him don't you know that angels are more handsome than men there are no ugly angels see angels were not they were not born they were created a symbol of god's own artistry are you getting me listen if you see adam in heaven today you will know the difference between adam and every man who was born adam was not born god molded him no woman's womb caused imperfection in him I have come to the end of my life. Take over. Now look up. This is another where I'm showing you the creation that happened before Genesis 1. Or who shut up the sea with doors. So God is saying the sea that we are seeing, there are doors in the spirit that shut it and create a boundary that means every time you see flooding is an anomaly a beast from hell is unlocking a door by operating certain principles and in the days to come the sons of light will have spiritual intelligence enough to challenge spirits across territories it was on the strength of this kind of knowledge that joshua looked at the sun he said i know your geography stand still and the sun said yes sir i see your intelligence listen except you don't believe the prophecy that our generation is going to be great if you think it is a joke that the bible says it shall come to pass on that day that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted they will do certain things that will scare men and all nations will run to it We may not look like it, but we are coming. There is something God is doing in our lives. This is why it is important to subscribe to the dealings of the Spirit. Are you seeing why some people can become untouchable? It's not that, see, there is the knowledge that you have, there will no longer be fear. What will make you afraid? You have an ancient knowledge that, that, predates Genesis 1 and on the strength of that before that time the Holy Ghost was still operating we are talking about mysteries let's just read to verse 14 when I made the cloud its garment and thick darkness a swaddling band for it and broke up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors Look at the command God gave the seas. Verse 11. And said, Thus far shall thou come, but no further, and here shall thou proud waves be stayed. Are you getting me now? The psalmist, the man you call David, these were some of the secrets that David had. And David was a warrior. He was, see, these people, that were called sons of God were sons of God on the strength of the mysteries that they knew I told you the concept of son of God did not start in the New Testament sons of God men who had power and authority as if they were not human beings they walked among us but they were absolutely unlimited. Abraham, David, when, when Jezebel was threatening people, one man just showed up,
called Elijah the Tishbite. No other information. He said, who is this woman giving people headache? Elijah the Tishbite. Taking fresh air on a mountain with proper understanding of spiritual laws. And a band comes with all their ammunition. Elijah says, look at these helpless people. You, let me tell you, the knowledge of the mysteries of God can make you a wonder. It was on the strength of this. Elijah taught Elisha these things. So Elisha was sitting down. And, the, and remember, was it the Assyrians now or the Philistines? One of all those people. They came and the servant was just, he said, come, keep quiet. You are only afraid. Oh Lord, I know that this man may not have that knowledge, but can you open his eyes? When he opened his eyes, that man saw. See, see what Elisha did for them. He made them blind and they gave them food to eat. They led them somewhere. Men who bastardized physical laws on the strength of what they knew. Samson was a man who had that strange understanding and showed us that a man can tap might from a realm beyond his normal body. And he used the jawbone of an ass and destroyed people with it. Couldn't ten people rush him and then another person quack him. Then somebody put a spear quickly. How did he kill them? It was the same formula that David knew and he taught the mighty men in the cave of Adullam. And they came up with that formula. One man killed 800 people that a sword that means he was not holding that sword physically no matter how you fight a sword cannot cleave to your hand what spiritual law did he use to hold the sword you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all dominion you have taken all the praise you have made them yours See, this is what eating of the tree of life does for you it reveals more of god are you seeing why the bible says the testimony of jesus is the true spirit the character the operation of prophecy right now if we start worshiping on the strength of this knowledge many of you have seen the might of god and you see how much he can change your situation and you will laugh at certain things without being motivated you know that your god is able then some songs begin to make meaning this is what jesus taught the disciples and after a while they didn't even know whether they had faith or not. He said, you guys have been with me. You go and try what I've taught you. And this guy stepped into town and did mighty things. No cathedral, no ushers, no publicity. They saw devils crying up and down. They said, this is what Jesus told us. While they were discussing, another devil was shouting. And the Bible says they returned rejoicing. They said, ah, even the demons were subject to us. They were not born again as we know because jesus had not died but a revelation empowered them it is that revelation that can make a handkerchief a man can hold a handkerchief and fall does a handkerchief have faith can a handkerchief speak can he prophesy can he talk it The apostolic work that God is doing in the church universal is going to scare the kingdom of darkness. Are you seeing why they are scared about your life? Because they do not yet know what you will become. But on the strength of the training you are going through, the devil is getting scared. That's why you will get persecution left, right and center. The devil will say, stop him. Stop him. In the days that come, the least among us will be as great as David. It's not an issue of MOG and one special man of God carrying an anointing and then a bunch of helpless people. Let me tell you, as we explore the things in the kingdom, you will find out the laws that can activate the gifts of the, of the spirit in a man. Are you getting me? If a herbalist can bend somebody down and wash his eyes and he will suddenly start seeing, what revelation did Elisha know that he told Naaman, go to a river, bath there, and be clean? 
there was a time that a man was sick very sick and elisha just took some leaves and dropped it on his leg Hiya. what did these people know are you seeing why the bible says the earth was not worthy of them he said this earth no this earth was not worthy of them philip was walking and suddenly this man left i pray that god will grant us grace so that i will have the opportunity to teach on prophecy or the prophetic and then i will show you certain things by the grace of god according to the limit of grace that has been given to me on how the prophetic work do you know why it's possible to see a thing before it starts an adumbration of the prophetic is what is shown in our geography we call it time zones everybody say time zone how many of you know that some people have already seen tomorrow is that true now that is the, the spirit and the ability of prophecy there are some people now that are already in tomorrow are you following me now they can tell you how tomorrow looks like but you are catching up are you getting me <sighs> what technology did scientists use to rewind and fast forward who gave them that concept that you can rewind a video huh? to go back so that you watch something you like and you can fast forward it to jump something you don't like who taught them that principle look let me tell you don't fool yourself science does not rule the world the realm of the spirit rules the world many scientists explore science with a level of passion that broke the boundaries of science and they entered into some realms please let's go back to what we are talking about for heaven's sake mysteries spiritual codes dominion in the kingdom only becomes a reality in a man's life to a degree that he understands and applies the mysteries of the kingdom please i want to teach you something listen by the way let me take a minute and talk about the miracle service look up the sincere truth is that there are many of you right here you are not you are not necessarily sick you are not necessarily oppressed the reason why you are coming here for many of you is to grow right now some keys have been given to you are you getting my point miracle service is like is is an evangelistic if it's the same you that comes next week alone are you getting me now there are no demons to cast out of you again what you need is transformation and that's what is happening so miracle service is a time where god gives you an opportunity to extend the hand of mercy to many who otherwise will be buffeted by satan are you getting my point so every last friday is an opportunity for you to draw somebody who is about to die of a terminal disease or a family that has suffered all kinds of things don't just come for miracle service alone there's there's hardly much teaching that we do during miracle service it's a time of ministration for many of you where you really get blessed is the time of prophecy and maybe impartation not necessarily healing and deliverance so why don't you become that agent of change and go and fish men and say look you've got to be blessed you don't know the lord you're not born again come it's an opportunity for you to start putting to work that which the lord is committing unto you hallelujah god rules the heavens and the entire kingdom through mysteries god has deep knowledge he has secrets the bible reveals certain mysteries i'm going to run through them get the tape we may not have time to read the verses one by one mark chapter 4 verse 1 talks to us about the mystery of the kingdom of god first corinthians 15 verse 51 talks to us about the mystery of resurrection he said behold i show you a mystery we shall not all die but we shall be changed so we see paul i show you a mystery a mystery a mystery 
Ephesians 1 verse 9 Paul speaking about the mystery of God's will that was committed unto him Ephesians chapter 3 verse 3 Colossians 1 25 to 27 talks about the mystery of Christ so Christ understanding Christ cannot be through head knowledge it's a mystery it is through the illumination of the spirit that you will understand please are you following me Ephesians 5 verse 32 talks about the mystery of marriage about a man and a woman hello you don't you don't understand marriage because you are old marriage is a mystery that takes the spirit Paul began to talk to us and he said this is a mystery and in it I talk about Christ and the church Ephesians 6 verse 19 talks about the mystery of the gospel this gospel that we preach is a mystery 2nd Thessalonians 2 verse 7 talks about the mystery of iniquity and I'll touch a bit on this when I start talking on the Ecclesia the mystery of iniquity a secret code that Satan uses it is the mystery of iniquity that can bring what we call transgenerational causes is the mystery of iniquity that can bring what is called spells and pronouncements upon people iniquity iniquity is not sin to sin means to err to default first timothy 3 verse 9 talks about the mystery of faith holding forth the mystery of faith with a pure conscience it talks about the mystery of faith this faith 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 that people talk about is a mystery that's why many people talk about faith and have no results because they teach faith from a scientific perspective but when you are given illumination this faith is a mystery first timothy 3 verse 16 talks about the mystery of godliness great is the mystery of godliness this was the mystery that john lake understood that god can come and become a man and something happened in john lake's life no sickness could touch that man he made spokane one of the healthiest city in the entire world during his time revelations 1 verse 20 talks about the mystery of the seven stars these were mysteries that were given john in the isle of patmos when he was caught up to the third heavens the mystery of the seven stars revelation 17 verse 5 calls babylon a mystery ah what is babylon babylon is the prophetic representation of the satanic kingdom and its operation adumbrated in a city called babylon the physical babylon was a reflection of the spiritual babylon just like the tabernacle was a reflection of the tabernacle in the heavens are you getting my point now so a physical manifestation of babylon and the bible says babylon itself that system is a mystery Revelation 17 verse 17 and I will show you the mystery of the woman a woman is a mystery brothers stop blaming yourself a woman is a it takes revelation what did I say it takes do you know why a woman is a mystery because there are many aspects of a woman that it takes light for you to know let me give you two number one a woman is a gate in the spirit why is she a gate the only gate that can birth another life you think god just put womb in a woman why didn't they put womb in an animal just get pregnant and drop the seed in the animal no a woman is a gate in the spirit you will now see the reason why if you pray deliverance for 10 people about eight of them will be ladies there is a reason why satan loves ladies it's not for sex are you getting what i'm saying let the devil anoint one man and he can conquer ten men let satan anoint one woman 
she doesn't need to conquer men she will go to the king that rules those people jezebel are you seeing that now a representation of the men elijah conquered 100 people jezebel made the prophets of god to go and hide one woman you see why she's a mystery when a woman says she's going to deal with you start fasting <laughs> keep calling them weaker vessels that if a woman tells you you will see run fast run we talk very little about wizards but we talk so much about witches first corinthians 4 verse 1 let's let's finish up the mysteries of god god himself is a mystery that's why all this scientology and these junks that attempt to explain god from a three-dimensional plane forget about all those things god himself is a mystery tongues are a mystery first corinthians 14 verse 2 we speak mysteries. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 about the hidden mysteries, the wisdom of God shrouded in a mystery that the princes of this world did not know. Hallelujah. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes dominion the true revelation of dominion pray say lord open my eyes there is something i need to know there is something i need to see there is a realm of power i need to step in pray for the sake of your family pray for the sake of our nation pray for the sake of your children Open me up to the hidden truths of the spirit. Cause my eyes to see. Let the veil be taken off my eyes, O God. That I will walk in power for real. Not as a man of God, but as an ambassador of the kingdom. Give me explanation to the happenings around my life. Let me understand the system that keep tossing my life to and fro. Show me the codes, oh God. Open my eyes and let me see. Uncover puzzles in my life. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word I will forever sing your praise. I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will forever sing your praise. Listen. When you catch the revelations I'm sharing with you, you can look at a man 
and alter the course of the devil in his destiny with the power of the word that word will live on the strength of the mysteries you have and no power in existence you see what makes the spoken word powerful it's not just about speaking a lot of people keep speaking he said upon this rock there must be a rock that you build on that when you speak it will come to pass that rock is the comprehension of this hidden truth that was why he told john he says seal it up this is for an appointed time close it he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the seals and the elder tapped me and said do not weep the book can be opened when you catch these mysteries you can walk to a sick body and while you look at that person there are so many revelations that will stream from you that without touching the person he gets healed at once because your revelations exact a force in the spirit are you getting me now demons celebrate on the strength of believers they know we are ignorant of the mysteries of the kingdom so that even when we are praying we are praying out of ignorance and our prayers much effort but it generates very little results and we come back sweating and we believe that on the strength of our sweating it should happen Je listen jesus the custodian of the mysteries when he came the demon said ah you have come to destroy us you know every law it takes to check us out so we beg you when will it happen in your life when you will walk into your house and people will start calling you and say please i want to see you and you say you know i'm i'm a witch right i'm going to pack out peacefully i've been oppressing your people and like jesus you will say go out never to return what many prophets have come to swindle your parents of all their money you step in as an ambassador and every time they say something is writing like a doctor while they are talking god is talking to you and you look between the lines and you tell them i have come to stay evil this is not about man of god you look at a woman who is buried and you understand the mystery of creation not just the mystery of healing not just the mystery of creative miracles the mystery of creation and the woman says i have a damaged fibroid all of a sudden many scriptures start firing in your head how elijah bathed and god healed how many things happen and on the strength of that revelation you say it is possible madam you go back and come with your child i remember somebody who walked to Adeboye, they were, I mean, um, um, Abioye, David Abioye, Bishop David Abioye. And he was going to his office, and the husband and wife, they came and they said, Daddy, we have been, you know, we've been trusting God, no child. And Adeboye turned and looked at the man. He said, Mr. Man, you better get this woman pregnant before the next time. And that's how he left them. That was the end of it. There was a revelation. Male and female, he created them. A woman is not a man. Are you getting me now? Hmm. That's the revelation that can enter you and you can get to the place of prayer and say, Lord, if you created them male and female, where is the male version of my life? I'm tired of singleness. Male and female. That alone is a revelation. See, talk does not make the realm of the spirit scared. Talk does not drive demons. There is a light. There is a light that you carry to the realm of the spirit. And it is that light that brings power. And through the greatness of that power, every enemy will submit. Hallelujah. Ecclesia. Everybody write. The Ecclesia. The church is one mystery. This is really the topic for tonight. The Ecclesia. E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. E-double-K-L-E-S-I-A. Let us understand the Ecclesia tonight very briefly before we pray.
Matthew 16 from verse 18 and 19. The Ecclesia. Matthew 16. Can you project it for us please? And amplify it. Now look up please. Let me give a little background. Can I have two or three people? Just any two or three people. Just stand here. I want to show you something. Who is the last person? Anybody? Thank you. Look up. In ancient times, I told you that kings reign through mysteries, right? There were certain people in every kingdom called knights. K-N-I-G-H-T. Everybody write that word down. Knights. Grant us revelation, oh God. These men called knights, look at me. They were a special selection. They were not military men alone. They were what we call the highest level of the intelligence of that kingdom. Are you getting me? They went through special training from martial art to astrology. Are you following me now? To science to all biology they were learned in every area now these knights were the custodians of the secrets and the mysteries of that kingdom hallelujah it was given to those knights how many of you i said it last week how many of you have watched these kinds of films where they go and hide treasures under a rock somewhere in a kingdom all right and there may be a magic word until you can pronounce the magic word then the door will open only the knights had knowledge of this hallelujah if the kingdom were about to be destroyed they know where to escape with the king and other people they had secret entrances in and out of the kingdom these knights were the ones that we call apostolos titus 1 verse 1 that's where we get the word apostle they were a special people set apart and sent as envoys of the king. So if for instance, they came to capture maybe the queen or any nobleman in the land, even when they destroy all the military people, are you getting me? They can send just three knights. Three knights alone can go and subdue a whole kingdom and bring back the queen. And then the king will crown them some of you read about Obama doing it to the military, right? They crown them. They increase them in ranking. Hallelujah. This concept of knighthood and let me call it apostleship and, and, and uh, ambassadorship. This is the platform on which we will be able to understand the ecclesia. God bless you, sirs. The word church, please listen. The word church is not a religious terminology at all. Are you getting me? The word church has nothing to do with religion. The word church is a governmental terminology. Ecclesia. It's a governmental language. It's a political language. That word ecclesia, what does it mean? It means the called out ones. The separated ones, the trained ones, the commissioned ones. Ecclesia. It's not about a building at all. It's not about a pastor and a congregation. No. Ecclesia is a governmental language. It's a language that is used to describe envoys. Men who were trained with military intelligence with all kinds of intelligence sophisticated men men of dexterity and intelligence they were sent by the king the first use of that word was by jesus himself in matthew 16 from verse 18 and 19. we need to understand what the church really is hallelujah then we can compare what we know today to be church 
as against the pattern of God. Because you see, the structure of the kingdom is such that it must be done in the earth as it is in the heavens. That means we must reproduce the pattern of things. And one of the manifestations of the spirit of Elijah is to set in order. You bring order. You restore the patterns of the tabernacle of David. Matthew 16 verse 18. Let's hurry up. Wherever we can stop, we must not necessarily finish. Matthew 16. Verse 18. And I say unto thee, Jesus speaking, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my, whose church? I will build my, he said, and the of shall prevail. The same word that was used for Jacob and, the, and God. Huh? Prevail. Prevail a contention. So, the first description of church gives it a military description. Are you following me now? The moment church is mentioned, the next word is gate of not nice chairs and pews. The church the gates of hell the church the gates of hell what is the church the church is God's system the church is God's strategy for enforcing the kingdom the church is God's system for restoring back his original pattern the church is God's system is God's strategy is the name of the mystery that God will use to restore all things it's called the church the ecclesia are you following me now the church is a mystery that's why many people go to Bible schools theological schools and we do not understand church we study homiletics we study everything we can study But then we may never understand it except the spirit of God opens our eyes. Listen, the concept of church had always been in God's mind right from the Garden of Eden. It didn't just come in the New Testament. Are you getting me? God's idea was for Adam and Eve to give birth to their first child in the garden. Are you getting me? So that the child can see how the garden looks like. And the lifestyle, the kingdom lifestyle in the garden. And then they begin to reproduce that pattern across the entire earth. Satan knew it. That's why he attempted to thwart the plan. So the first child was born outside Eden. So he never had an understanding of how the life of Eden would be. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. From that time, God desired a people whom he would call and bring to himself. He wanted a people that he would consecrate and give his values, his agenda, his vision. God's idea has never changed. God's agenda has not changed. Time has changed technology has changed but God's vision God's universal agenda is still in force Exodus 19 from verse 1 and 6 when you read that you begin to see the pattern for time's sake we may not read God began to communicate his desire to separate a people that he would be their God and they would be his people his people who were consecrated unto him and then God found a man called Abraham. The first manifestation of the ecclesia after Noah. Hallelujah. You see the reason why God called Noah. Are you getting me? His three sons, their three wives, separated them and destroyed the earth. A corruption happened again. It had always been the contention between the agenda of God and the manifestation of the gates of hell. 
Now Abraham came, an idol worshiper, and he said, Abraham, come out of thy father's house. I call you out. Be a called out person. Be separate. And if you do that, then I will bless you. Then I will do all of this and that. Genesis 12, verse 1 and 2. And then God called the man called Moses. And it was Moses that took the people from Egypt out through the Red Sea. And God gave them laws and ordinances. Now, please listen. I'm going to say some things that would disturb you this night. Laws and ordinances were what separated the people of God from other nations. Are you getting me? They had laws and they had ordinances. That was what created a distinguishing feature between the nation of Israel and another hedonistic nation. For instance, they had a law that they should not eat blood. So if other nations were eating blood, the nation of Israel did not eat blood. And so that marked them out to be a separate people. The laws and ordinances that were given through Moses to the nation of Israel marked them out as a separate people. Another thing is that God's people had a culture. Write it. Culture is the way of life of a people. Look, we must understand this. Otherwise, we'll, we'll keep playing games in the church. The kingdom has a culture. But what we teach in church now is coming to the kingdom with any culture you want. As long as you name the name of Christ, that's trash from the pit of hell. The kingdom has a culture. Its own culture. Hallelujah. When you travel to the Yoruba land, they have a culture. And if you intend staying there long enough, you had better start learning the culture when you go to Igbo land they have a culture a way of life when you come to the north they have a culture when you come to the middle belt or down northeast they have a culture every territory has a culture say after me the kingdom has a culture we cannot allow lawlessness to just happen in the body of Christ there are all kinds of lawless things that happen in the body of Christ and we believe there is nothing wrong with it when you understand kingdom you will know that the kingdom of God has a culture hallelujah from Matthew 16 verse 18 to 19 we see three things about the ecclesia number one that scripture reveals to us that god had an agenda that's number one he had an agenda that attempted to be thwarted by satan from adam but that his agenda is still in force and would be fulfilled that's the first thing that scripture reveals to us everybody say god has an agenda yes satan has tried through the ages to thwart the agenda of God but I'm telling you that the gates of hell will not prevail the agenda of God will still come to pass what is the agenda of God a restoration of the values the ordinances of the kingdom hallelujah number two it reveals to us that the biggest opposition to this agenda are the gates of hell don't mistake in it. The biggest agenda to this advancement is not the terrorists. It's not the godless people. It's not the unbelievers. But the gates of hell. That means everything you see around that physically attempts to limit the advancement of the kingdom was birthed and sponsored by the gates of hell. The greatest opposition to God's agenda is the gates of hell. What, what are the gates of hell? I need to explain this. The gates of hell describes Lucifer and all his strategies and the devices deployed to frustrate God's agenda. 
the gates of hell attempts to describe lucifer and all the strategies and devices that he deploys to frustrate god's agenda second corinthians 2 from verse 10 to 11 tells us that we should not be ignorant of the devil's stratomai his devices his mysteries his agenda do not be ignorant satan has a pattern satan has a blueprint part of his blueprint is how he will destroy your life part of his blueprint is how he will ruin nigeria part of his blueprint is how he will take over the seven mountains and the spheres of influence part of his blueprint is how he will mislead and deceive pastors to derail from the patterns and the ordinances of god so that the enemy can come and sow tears among the wheat part of his ordinances and his strategy is to defile the sacrament of marriage he has a strategy and if the church is ignorant we are in trouble number three it reveals to us that the system and the agency through which this global invasion this restoration of god's pattern would occur is called the church the church is god's system is the mystery he revealed to advance and fulfill his agenda brothers and sisters the church is first and foremost not about a sunday monday wednesday friday gathering of people no the church is not just about buildings the first revelation about the church is that the church is a strategy the church is a system through which god's agenda will be restored back to the earth The ecclesia first talks of a species of people. Write it down. The ecclesia talks of a species of people. Reformers, revivalists, and ambassadors. So the first revelation of ecclesia is that it talks of a special breed of people. A species of people. A kind of people called out, set apart. A breed of reformers, revivalists, ambassadors, not pastors, not just prophets, not just apostles, ambassadors. Everybody say ambassadors. That's the word we must focus on. We are focusing too much on pastor and apostle and prophet. No, the word is ambassador. The envoys that will carry this ideology to the systems. Then number two, it talks of the institution that trains, builds, and equips these ambassadors. The ecclesia of God is also the institution that he put in place. Just like a terrorist camp, just like a, a platform that was built, just like a diplomatic training center. Are you getting my point now? To train, to build, and to equip these ambassadors and these envoys. To train men and women that will make a difference by becoming the difference. Not just make a difference by talking about it. Not just make a difference by designing posters and wearing shirts. Jesus is Lord. What good is wearing a shirt, Jesus is Lord, when your life is not a living epistle? And there are ministries that put all kinds of pressure on people. You must buy this and buy that to show you an ambassador. I'm not against that, but I'm telling you the highest symbol of an ambassador is not his attire, is that you become a written epistle. I can carry a shirt written jesus freak and still be a thief i can use that shirt to be sleeping with a lady 
and on it is written Jesus freak I'm not against marketing the ideologies of the kingdom but I'm telling you beyond all these external religiosities is that we must become the written epistles say amen so the true concept of church starts with the hearts and the lives of men are you getting me not looking for land to build not looking for a cathedral to expand when we talk about the institutional aspect of the church we talk about that but the average pastor when he wants a church the first thing he's thinking about is where can i get land let me build my church in four months and make a name very very wrong concept of the church hallelujah the final thing i'll talk about before we pray is the process of becoming the ecclesia never let anybody fool you that being born again makes you the church i'm going to show you right now if the church listen the bible says those he predestinated he called that's one level those he called he justified another level those he justified he glorified there are processes in the kingdom mm. what is the process of becoming the ecclesia that ambassador and then how is the church as an institution supposed to function according to god's new testament pattern not according to a denomination not according to a sect not according to african tradition according to the patterns and the ordinances of the kingdom when the church functions as it's supposed to function no power in existence will be able to stand against it because the bible says i will build my church and the bible says we all like living stones being built into a spiritual house so that church we are the blocks that god will use and we become a formidable defense and the bible says if we do it right the gates of hell shall not prevail you know why the church is being trampled i will show you the revelation the bible says if the salt has lost its savor it is good for nothing but it will be trampled by men not demons you see why men are trampling the church they act nigerian films and mock pastors they act all kinds of things and discredit people he said if the church loses its sever he gave us a sign he said when you see men trampling the church they are losing its sever number one the process of becoming the ecclesia number one is your entrance into the kingdom this is what we call new birth please write it let's hurry up with these steps and then we'll pray want to close early today because of the bike issues entrance into the kingdom new birth romans 8 from verse 8 to 10 and verse 13 the bible gives us the condition for being saved it says let me just turn here quickly let's save time romans 10 verse 9 if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then verse 13 says, For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the first step. Brothers and sisters, not the only step to becoming the ecclesia. Those set apart ones, the ones that First Peter chapter 2 talks about, will go there before we round up. Number two is the putting off of the old man, 
the second step to becoming the ecclesia the putting off of the old man another name for it is repentance through deliverance right i will explain it to you many people do not know what deliverance is and i know that there have been the concept of deliverance has been abused many people just think deliverance is about people rolling up and down and coughing out things and vomiting all kinds of things no that's not necessarily the entire scope of deliverance deliverance means to be separated from something are you getting my point you must put off the old man if you truly want to walk as the ecclesia please don't let anybody confuse you it is part of the necessary and sufficient condition to be the ecclesia the light of the world ephesians 4 verse 22 please help us media if we can rush it repentance deliverance these things must happen to you it is called the putting off of the old man by deliverance i don't mean hands are laid on you and then you roll and fall on the floor no i i told you what repentance was aaron can i use you again it was with you i used you last week watch this an ideology a culture a mindset all right is making aaron to move a, to take a particular course in life is that true when the word of god comes right the mystery of the gospel when well taught and understood should make the guy turn are you getting me this turning not the walking the turning is what we call repentance are you getting me the walking is not necessarily repentance i will tell you the name the turning away your willingness to turn from your traditional way of thinking from your denominational way of thinking from your cultural way of thinking by the power of god's word is called repentance and it is deliverance because there are forces strongholds that make men to act and behave that way and when that separation comes you are put off the old man the bible says that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to what deceitful lust lust there does not just talk about immorality it means that there is a craving please are you getting my point now this is the foundation of what we know to be the holiness movement which is not wrong but i will show you the imbalance and the imperfection of the holiness movement if you put off a loan listen if you put off a loan it's still not enough how many of you know that there are many people in church who are not sleeping around they are not drinking but the lust and the urge is practically killing them yes or no pastors reverends bishop so i don't i will not come and fornicate or do something with this lady because i am aware that god hates it is that true but in my mind there's all kinds of torture i don't want to steal i don't want to do malpractice just because there are people if that loss is still there you are not delivered are you seeing the limitation of the holiness movement so they teach ordinances don't do this don't do that which is good but if you do not put on that's the next thing put on there is an ideology there is a mindset that became a stronghold that drove you into that way of life if you just turn mechanically without being free from the mindset from that which causes you you will stand although you may not commit the act of sin that's what leads a lot of people into things like pornography and masturbation because we men of god are lords over people supervising who slept with who and who so because of that fear they say ah let no lady come to my house so they can lock the door and download pornography
to the demon is still there if you put off you must put on that's when true liberty occurs the process of becoming the true ecclesia number three the putting on of the new man we call that renewal and transformation so new birth repentance and deliverance the next step is renewal and transformation paul was speaking to people who were already born again they were already born again a congregation of believers and he says do not conform to the thinking pattern of this age but be ye transformed can you see transformation and renewal used be ye transformed by the renewing so it is transformation that now pushes Aaron experientially are you getting me now out of this realm so that it no longer is not just that the Bible said it but it has become his way of life but a lot of people sing religiously the things I used to do I do them no more but you are still thinking about it you are still imagining it to an extent that people have started preaching messages and said there's no man there's no man anywhere who does not at any time imagine himself sleeping with a woman forget it we're all human beings people have coined messages to explain their refusal to put on they have put off but they are being frustrated so you are seeing the church money something is pinching you can't i use this church money and build a bungalow and you know that if you touch god's money you know it will bring a curse on you so the fear of that curse is keeping you but you are dying slowly every time you see the finance department counting the money you are almost dying you are not yet free you are saved but you are not free he said where the spirit of the lord is there is not only salvation there is liberty many people in the church are saved but i'm telling you they are not free you know what i'm saying is painful but it's true But God wants you to be free. He wants you to be free. Hallelujah. Aaron, God bless you. And then, listen. Point number two and three is what produces perfect holiness. Please write it down. Putting off a load is not enough to know that holiness is a nature. That the Holy Ghost, the spirit of holiness comes upon you. He comes upon you to open you up to the possibilities of walking experiential in holiness. It is the grace for holiness he grants unto you that makes you to be able to walk. Please understand this. I know that there's a general concept of holiness in the body of Christ. That holiness is not what you do. Holiness is just what you receive. Please be careful. There is a very serious balance. Holiness is the work you you walk on to it on account of the grace that came by the spirit of holiness not mechanically not traditionally please get this there's a lot of perversion in the body of christ i'm aware that there are men of god who sleep around with their congregations and have secured them with revelations that once you are born again the bible says this and that and that we have been engraved in his palm the only thing that takes people to hell is this and that and that and so many people move i hope you know that one of the mysteries of iniquity is the mysteries of lawlessness please do not be deceived i want you to be a powerful church this is not the way our fathers walked and if we walk this way we are suffering right now because our parents in ministry they walk the path of true holiness but when they got prosperity and they arrived there they changed the message and they gave us the younger generation and we are we are suffering the fathers have eaten sour grapes 
and our generation now have become powerless because we are absorbing doctrines that may not be wrong but they are not balanced hallelujah the putting off of the old man through the spirit of God and the putting on of the new man renewed in righteousness is the complete concept of biblical holiness point number four the process of becoming the ecclesia number one entrance into the kingdom new birth two repentance through deliverance three renewal and transformation number four is equipping and training the saints to establish and advance the kingdom are you seeing the process now the fourth step is now the equipping and the training this is where you now talk about the institution church the assembly of believers this is the core function of the assembly of believers now listen this equipping and this training of these prospective ambassadors to advance the kingdom is what the Bible calls discipleship. Write it down. Are you seeing that many things we have taught as discipleship is just familiarizing people with the ordinances of that denomination for the purpose of being baptized and receiving positions in the church. It may not be wrong in himself in itself but it's not the perfect ordinance of God discipleship is not about just coming somewhere and sitting down and indoctrinating people with concepts and theological ideas no discipleship is the ministry of the fivefold to the body equipping them what is happening right now is what discipleship is are you getting my point now unfailing to you the patterns and the concepts the ordinances and the mysteries of the kingdom that means the real goal of the church is not to keep members there forever in its ideal form a growing church is not necessarily a church with the largest crowd a growing church is the church that has been able to effectively disciple people and release them to begin to advance the kingdom are you seeing our concept right now there's nothing wrong with crowd don't get me wrong but i'm saying that there is a little twisting and is getting into error men of god believe that you are a great man of god and the kingdom is being advanced if there are people here and there is an overflow outside and there are other people then we say the kingdom is advancing it is advancing if the people are being taught with the intent that they will begin to manifest as ambassadors that means a church if you are here in koinonia for one year two years and you cannot find your place in destiny and begin to take the influence of the kingdom we have failed as leaders and we are cheating you are you getting my point it doesn't matter if koinonia starts growing it doesn't matter if joshua selman is becoming a famous man that's not god's parameter for measuring the success of the church please are you understanding me because some of you are under a lot of ministries and with time god is calling you some of you are already in ministry right now get the record straight so that you don't get up in error under pressure if you are truly advancing the kingdom god will send people to you the bible says and god increased to their number daily as those who should be saved it's god that brings increase Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but true increase comes from God. The institution of the local assembly, the institution of platforms like Koinonia and different churches scattered across the globe, if they function properly, should be a powerful force in training people. Question. As we attempt to round up let me ask you a question why is it that there are millions of churches maybe 
or hundreds of thousands in Nigeria but the transformation as far as taking the ideology of the kingdom is very little why is that so could it be that there is a violation of God's pattern of church are you getting my point now in every city there are ministries ministries like redeem who have gotten unusual grace to push beyond boundaries push beyond territories even where a church cannot be planted you find their churches there the power of the holy spirit at work in them and many other ministries but the question is there is a difference between the growth of a ministry and the advancement of the agenda of the kingdom koinonia can open branches all over and everybody can rejoice and we will celebrate only if that ecclesia that institution is training and building people the job of the man of god it's not just to sit down in front and have water and have ushers and have an office with AC. Wonderful. Let his life be comfortable for as long as that ecclesia remains a true apostolic and prophetic platform. Please hear me. Your fellowship is an ecclesia. Your home cell is an ecclesia. It doesn't just mean a church with a name like living faith redeem or, or all of the great ministries we have the bible says where two or three are gathered in my name i am there in their midst wherever there is a training and equipping a building of people where you are supplied the tools for advancing the kingdom what are the tools influence excellence the anointing prosperity character the message of the kingdom are you now seeing the context in which all these teachings come so if i teach you on prosperity if i just teach you so that you become a multi-millionaire and then sing a song and flaunt your cars and say god has been good to me as good as that is you are not an effective ambassador are you getting me now so i can be comfortable to teach prosperity on the strength of the fact that you are aware that i'm teaching it as a tool for kingdom advancement i can teach character knowing that you are aware that it is a tool for kingdom advancement are you getting my point now every other teaching is a means to an end equipping you to take over to bring the influence of the kingdom and then the final stage of becoming the ecclesia is what I call the execution. Write it. The execution. Where you have now been equipped. The equipping is ongoing. But that you should be able to be equipped enough that you can start working while you are still learning. I call it the execution. What is the execution? fulfilling the go ye command that means you have been equipped jesus walked with the people even when paul was coming to the end of his ministry paul kept saying that i may know him but it not it did not stop paul from planting churches and building things so that you are still learning is not an excuse if you are really growing a time should come you should join part of the go ye team to now start saying all right we have been equipped it's time to begin to go and the bible says go ye into where cosmos everybody write cosmos i've taught it conquering cosmos i won't go into there again what is the execution taking the message the influence please write i hope you're writing this same thing on facebook Please, and all the social media, let them understand what I'm saying. The execution means fulfilling the go ye command. 
it means taking the message the influence and the power of the kingdom to all the mountains and the spheres of human existence obeying the koyi command that you have now been trained can i have four people all of you here just come from my man please come hallelujah now watch this step one they have come indicating their interest to serve god praise god just turn towards me guys step two is that they undergo a process of the putting off through the word of god everything happens by the word are you getting me now delivered from all their ideologies uh, witchcraft all every kind of thing step three they put on the new man by the power on the spirit of god and then the equipping continues and then a time comes god begins to send them you go into politics and governance you go into arts and entertainment you become a pastor go into the mountain of religion you let me have three more people one two three four there are seven mountains you go into the media mama you like money business go into business stand here how are you now three people you go into the education go and become a professor you ah this is the guy that would have gone into financial go into the family life be a good husband teach people one two. are you seeing that now this is what we call goyi goyi is not just carry tract and talking and come and harass a brother with, with and say my brother time is up you are going to hell i'm not saying that is wrong but i'm saying if that is our concept of kingdom advancement we are joking a guy is quietly maybe trying to ask this lady out he has been maneuvering this thing for weeks and now is the moment to let it out and it may not be demonic maybe it's a christian brother you just come in you are talking for 20 minutes they don't know your name you just keep harassing the people and say do you know that hell is real blah 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 the way you are doing for the wages of sin is dead you never ask the person whether he's born again you never ask well, by god's grace i will teach us on evangelism how do you really evangelize the person does not know your name you just assume is a brother who wants to destroy that sister's life maybe it's even her pastor counseling her because the person may be wearing jeans and a t-shirt doesn't necessarily mean the person is a sinner now you waste time 30 minutes teaching and they keep quiet at the end of it they say brother we appreciate we are born again i say oh that's lovely you have you have wasted the time of the kingdom you would have politely introduced yourself and then you know that you are brethren in this work and then you can move on to make your job more effective but it's not your fault it's what you were taught and what you were told to do so you obey to the latter and that's why god is helping us please don't get me wrong trust evangelism and one-to-one -one evangelism are effective and they will remain effective forever are you getting my point now but that we need to balance it up the church is not about pastors all of you come come and stand here come and crowd me here and try to push me let me show you the nonsense that is going on in the body of christ because we've taught them if you want to advance the kingdom be a pastor are you seeing it now so aaron has been trained his potential is boiling he doesn't know what to do you've not taught him on purpose mama wants business or you make him church treasurer now you didn't make are you getting my point now so there is a lot of fight on the pulpit and then aaron gets angry and aaron breaks out and goes to france to go and start his church not that's not wrong i'm not saying everybody leaving a church is necessarily of the devil there are people god really spoke to are you getting my point but there are many people on the pulpit that have no business with pulpit are you hearing what i'm saying i've told Pro aaron is an apostle i've told this guy you're a prophet i've said you're an evangelist i've said you're a, you're a prayer warrior i've said you are you are what you're a pastor i've said you're a bible study teacher 
a businessman, he, see, he changes quickly. He really likes business for whatever reason. Praise God. This is what we have taught people. So every young man in church envisages the ladies, their passion is to see who is the pastor. And when one brother who is not a pastor just comes and says, Sister, good afternoon. She says, mm -mm, don't even start. I know where you are going. Don't waste your time. I'm going to marry a pastor. Because what you have been told is that except you stand behind this pulpit, you are not advancing the kingdom. And the lady in her innocence says, Ah, if that's the way to advance the kingdom, let me be a help meet to whoever has shown seriousness to advance this kingdom. So the other brothers are considered to be on serious people in the church no matter how effective they are and it puts pressure on them people start coming up with false visions people start creating their little bible studies because they want to respond to their concept of kingdom advancement but a true apostolic church builds people and lets them know that the businessman is as effective as the pastor are you getting my point now that the person who goes into fashion designing is also an apostle in his own respect so i salute him although he may be a member of my church but i never degrade him although i trained him i salute him and i tell him go with this fashion let ladies stop exposing their breasts left like and center because they think it's fashion get that junk out of the fashion world receive illumination from the spirit are you getting my point Take the fashion mountain so you will receive the same impartation as if you are a pastor but is to send you to that mountain and you will go with confidence it as a fashion designer the prophetic is working in your life you are receiving blueprints of designs and the businessman is making money for you are you getting my point now the other person is marketing what you have said in the media when that happens the gates of hell shall not prevail are you getting me because in the government there is an ambassador on our reality tv show will not be showing people who can listen to the language of grass rather it's not that you must say jesus in your television program let me tell you something there is a light and a power there is an effulgence that your programs are directed after the order of the pattern of the kingdom it does not mean you come up and say look everybody you are an unbeliever but you teach about character when you start with family values that are consistent with the principles of the kingdom you now begin to enter cosmos the sons of the kingdom are not wise that's the reason why we are not moving forward So before your program, you are praying in tongues for one hour and you talk to the prayer warrior and he's praying. Although you have a secular, in quote, a secular TV station, maybe a news station, but you have prayer warriors at the back. Just like all the rich men have the people that enchant for them. So the prayer warriors are praying. That's their ministry. They are prayer warriors. They are counselors and they are paid to do it. Hello? Did you hear what I'm saying? I see a lot of religion paid to pray, of course. This man is married. What do you want him to go and tell his wife? After praying from morning till night, for you to advance your kingdom. You did business and they paid you. You preached and they gave you honorarium. I'm not saying go and start telling people, you better drop money, I've learned my lesson. If you ever come to me for counseling without money, uh-uh. Please go back to your seat. The ecclesia is the light of the world. The ecclesia is the hope of our generation. The ecclesia is this mystery man that God is raising. Are you getting me? A man is not just a human being. A man can be a system. That was what the king saw in his dream. He saw a man standing the head of gold, the feet of clay. That man was a description of many dispensations. So this man called the church, the body with Christ being the head of this man called the ecclesia. Together they have become an unbeatable team. This is what we call koinonia.
the spirit and the bride walking together the spirit and the bride walking in the business world the spirit and the bride walking in the educational realm the spirit and the bride walking in family the spirit and the bride walking in churches the spirit and the bride are you seeing that now so your christianity does not just become to build branches and churches but that you take over a mountain advancing the kingdom is the resultant effect of this order and if we do this very well we will be hastening the return of our king let our king be lifted up oh Sana. hallelujah Aaron for instance please stand up Aaron Aaron is now heading the editing unit of what what newspaper daily trust he's now heading the the look at when did he start because of this kingdom mentality god said this guy will be an ambassador and within a short time god has taken him to joss to now head the editorial unit are you seeing now that's an ambassador right now he's listening to this so if somebody brings any junk in the paper he will throw it in the trash because he's the editor do you think god will lift him are you getting my point now my dear please come oh yeah now this is a career woman she likes book very well now god is taking her to great places because she loves education she has a dream of working in one of the where did you even tell me one one just tell me one of it you know all this un and all of this place now that's not wrong do you think if they go and they are discussing how to kill and wipe africans is it not votes they count will she vote it are you getting me so she's doing her own evangelism among the kings there through word of knowledge when one king is sick and sickness whips the living daylight out of him she uses her influence to go to his house and say although i'm a un worker i lay hands on you in the name of jesus that's your own church that's your own pulpit if that king arises he's is now born again two votes are there a time will come that's what happened to daniel daniel was part of the parliament in babylon and he single-handedly made the king to confess that nobody should speak against the god of daniel so when they talk about passing gay rights you just say no way for this reason and that reason and because you have the spirit of wisdom god will give you the facts to support it beyond the realm of human beings bless you are you understanding what i'm saying then god will raise some dangerous apostolic businessmen not businessmen that will take the bull by the horn they will behead the bull at once you know what the bull is the bull is the symbol of commerce is a god when you see people saying bull the bull is a god go to the new york stock exchange right in front of it you see the drawing of a bull it's a god that's the god of commerce you don't need to take the bull by the horn behead it let the dragon die and you speak and say it's time to bring in massive kingdom wealth for the kingdom and whilst you bring it in in a month or in a year you are making 60 billion naira and you just calculate 5 billion koinonia 10 billion living faith this one that that's how you are this you are a real kingdom financier no coercing no lying you are doing it as a ministry meanwhile five million for your wife to go to hawaii come on now god punish the devil the bible says see the bible says if you walk on the altar live by the altar hallelujah and you are now thinking two billion naira for evangelism i'm sowing this into capro ministry and you check you see a ministry like god tv saying we need five million we need five million and you say come on lord we are bigger than this you tell your business partners our profit for this month is going to god tv and god gives you intelligence you have such a great returns and you communicate it everybody say kingdom advancement 
if they have not been teaching you this you have not been in church are you hearing me we will never in advance the kingdom when we are some bunch of whims and broke people waiting for somebody to give twenty thousand, and you sit down they say today we have declared that based on our august mood swing there will not be work in two weeks he's traveling to india to go and consult a god and then the helpless believers just sit down they say they are slashing your salary into half so you will now get ten thousand will you ever think of kingdom advancement with ten thousand say i refuse to be poor say it this is the balanced view of prosperity not just to buy jeeps you will buy it but how many can you enter at a time brothers and sisters they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life. And then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people and there was nothing. And then Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread. His lunchbox and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus was Abba, so, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile this is a principle that does not just go to seats alone sacrificing the convenience luxury today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak to you sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful you want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit sacrifice a few minutes ago you were shouting and now koinonia is quiet why because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow if you want to be great listen to me if you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system get used to this language sacrifice you will always give up something to go up you won't hold what you have and still rise the lighter you are the higher you fly are we together sacrifice praise can be a sacrifice your seed can be a sacrifice your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go 
hearing what I'm saying? Most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting. Oh God, this one left me. A relationship left you but your health is still with you. That health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship. Your job left you but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. Miscarriage, and you are crying and saying, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad, but by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until it got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshiped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord. 
can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your prayers. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job came listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight Isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media Isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non it, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God, or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me bread to I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyediko. So there is it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has 
has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen, and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham, a sad story later happened, and then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mistake or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. 2 Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7. Just two scriptures. 2 Kings, chapter 7. We'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady. Who goes to her room and sees piles of money. Physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. 
it's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead, her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute, bring down that coffin. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say, God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said, it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can't do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happening in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. How oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha! He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. 
seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help. an orphan there's no one to take care of me listen let me tell you the truth there are many fathers and mothers prophecy just needs to bring two of you together tonight if you believe what i'm teaching you you will be amazed to see the way the lord will seated here and my baby cannot even move he's dead just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes i believe god i am one man of god that believes god can turn around any situation it will always be like the lord will perfect that concerning jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weak not. When the book is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can come back. I've lost my peace, can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you, please. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mind.
out and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call them.
those in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is telling me people will wear them now. This is a sign of restoration too. Lord, where are they? Let it happen now. There is a grace for performance. Grace for performance. Please bring them out quickly. Please, ushers, you should know this. We are saving time. Please, quickly. He says, grace for performance right now.
such a failure of primary school. Now you are a graduate, but it has still sponsored your lack of confidence. In the name that is above all things, one more time I pray. Anyone here still connected to his past? I come in the name of Jesus, the one whom I serve. I provoke an anointing from heaven. forgetting. I know you failed but forgetting. There is a spirit that keeps the past alive. So when you want to move it still reminds you. This one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind. The Bible says there is no man who stands on a block and looks back to his feet. Remember Lot's wife. She was connected to the past. Her exodus had begun to come. And they were asked to look, set their face like a flint. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. And while she was there, something about her past. And just for turning back, she became salt. The past can keep you in one place forever. Just because she turned back, she became salt. What is there in turning back? Everything. It can stagnate your life forever. I prophesy one more time. Whatever has made you to refuse to forget. that has made you to distrust any man that comes into your life because when they come you think they are like the ones who came before a past job, a past breakthrough, a past wife a whatever it is has stopped many people from moving forward every time you see success it looks like the way you rejoiced yesterday before failure came so you are even afraid of it, no for your business, then it crashed. Now God sends a helper. He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, he's reminding you of yesterday's failure and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. asking me to pray for people who nothing is working in their lives. Listen, this is a very serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming there. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here, inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know is the prayer that will tell you. Because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you. Inside and outside, especially overflow too. The one and the other. I'm just seeing rings of fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this category of people that nothing is working for. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Take 
moving, but it works for others till it gets to your top. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family, and the family people are here. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. You see, brothers and sisters, these are the things that stop you from experiencing results. My brother, come. Salvation has come. Come and stand here. I'm going to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes. Where are you from? Odo, Odo State. Odo is what? This is what I'm saying. Akure or Odo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm seeing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Where are you coming from now? Akure. Sir. That's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lake Listen, just one touch from the Lord to change your story with your hands. Lay come, overflow, he's in the overflow. Where are you? Please stand up, my brothers. Stand up. What's your name? Lay come, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. Stand here, your life is about to change. Look at me, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. Wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one standing. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before, by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish that because we have to pray for this. Augustus. Change your story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you something, Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around, it's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. 
You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. One. She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do so I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. If you are a sincere person. What do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you. So that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for You're you. Correct, sir. You're August. Correct, sir. That's what correct, stand up. That's what You're they correct, told sir. you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the MC Kefi. Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kefi. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program. Uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Kev. Oh, you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. You were government. part of the committee people yeah. there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. Yeah. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is a 
and I'm seeing a ring, but I'm not hearing the sound of a child. And the Lord is saying a child should come now. Two years, two years. Two years, where is the person? Come. No one, there's no one. Call the person's name now. Huh? No children, two years. No children, we are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. He's the one here in the Okay, you standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now? She will come back and testify here with a child. I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Back sometimes. Diabetes. Hold, I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Is that true, Mama? Okay. Okay. Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mama, that's it. It's over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Plateau State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, no, Kano. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. Is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this Christ. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now, never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands before we pray for the sick. I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. I command you to leave now. Go now. Go now. I command in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. And sabotage the 
still praying. Lift your hands and pray. For time's sake, you may not need to bring them out. Just, just leave them there, inside and outside, so that we can call those who are sick and pray for them quickly. Shall get to see Alakata. In the name of Jesus, I declare every influence that is attached to your family, the family that is trying to rob you right now in Jesus' name. against your life. In the day and in the night he's speaking against you. I stand here tonight in the name of Jesus and I stretch my hands towards you. If there is anyone inside, outside, under the sound of my voice, who is a victim of the speakings of altars, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. I cause those altars, they cease from functioning. I cause those altars Physical rings on your hand. Physical rings, then it will disappear. Who is that? There's someone here like that. Please quickly let me pray for you. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Sometimes you look at your hand and you will see you think it's a vision. Rings, like ring on your hand. You started seeing it in your dreams, but now physically, sometimes you will see it. Whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. Yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now. While we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to 
when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. Um, I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please, I don't do these things to disgrace people. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things, you are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside. Inside, please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as a Holy Spirit to speak here, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on, and this thing is crushing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate it. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophecy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you, are, if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or 
posible Koinonia celebrate They are still coming Let's give them one more minute Since God is already talking to them now Let's just take advantage of the anointing here Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at this voice. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says... For this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy that this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. At me, I want to pray for you, and I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen. Let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We we'll forward it to the, um, the prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. somebody outside I may not ask you to come you stole a phone on Thursday still with you go and return it after this service go and return that phone you love God but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens God can help you and God can bless you in the name of Jesus I set you free if I have not touched you just let me know and I will lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ. 
I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I curse Oh, you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. I pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman, bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we curse it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come right now. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. us to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy. We will continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We are going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow 1, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow 2, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one four, just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Ejimi will be outside, overflow one. Pastor Ejimi and Pastor Femi, overflow one. He's going to be praying, Pastor Alpha. You'll go to overflow two. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. 
please accept the people laying hands on you ask you you don't need to tell them what is wrong with you just stand by faith praise god the prophetic is at work if there is need to prophesy or talk to you just receive by faith it doesn't mean we have to touch the area just believe by faith you go and check yourself or call your loved ones in the name of Jesus. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are to restrain by time. And um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. Shabra Do we still have more? Please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. Now arise, so Lord, will you come to your rescue? Let the arms of your mind, and then we will rejoice as we glory in your righteousness. in the name of Jesus. Those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age-long captivities. 
you declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. the son of the living God I decree and declare right now every dry book every dry situation every hopeless situation in your life receive life right now in the name of Jesus receive life right now in the name of Jesus receive life right now in the name of Jesus everything called dead in your life dead finances dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction outside make sure you are connecting receive encounters that give you direction in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life every gift that is not yet speaking every grace that is you is still dormant within you whether spiritual gift or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata pakata kata kata, shekete kete kete, ma prato so doko to pa shekete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that he may be established. I stretch my hands to you. Out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy, something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the Spirit revealed in Scripture alongside others that have not been recorded. At the count of three, oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. Take it right now. Take it right now. 
step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards this gift in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here. destroy your prayer life so that your the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Access to the operation of the world. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. I impart upon you the gift of faith. Let it be yours now in the name of Jesus. I impart upon you the gift of faith. Capacity to do impossible things. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, one by one, beginning from tonight, the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves, I command everything that should be in your life and has left you, the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark, I command you to draw your blessings to your life now. your life now. Listen. Noah did not go to look for the animals. He just opened the door. The same way you have opened the door of your destiny, I command. I'm saying it again. I want you to believe me. It doesn't take time. It only takes the right word into your life. I decree and declare again. Between now and the next month's miracle service, let there be strange testimonies of restoration. Strange testimonies of restoration. Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 
for those who are students whether on campus the university or any other campus i declare most of you are on break now you are about to resume as you resume in the name of jesus i put life to your academics i command missing scripts to be found i command wrongly calculated results to be corrected in the name of jesus as you prepare to write your exams i prophesy like rain from four points upwards i prophesy like rain hear what i'm saying i prophesy like rain from four points upwards in the name of jesus christ anyone here trusting god for a job in the name of jesus between now and the next 30 days may the god of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. In the name of Jesus, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. I cause accidents. I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny. I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Even if they came before, I call them again. Thank you for lifting. is gone but I cannot let us go without giving an opportunity please everyone stand any of you of those let's honor this altar call quickly help, help those under the anointing there are people here standing and saying man of God I want to make it right with Jesus some of you gave your hearts to him but for some reason things began to go haywire and you're saying, man of God, I want to return back. Some of you are yet to make this decision. Please listen to me inside and outside. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh or start anew. Wherever you are, I want to count five. Please, if you are coming, I want you to run. Clear the way for them. Our time is up and we have to be very, very fast. There are so many other things to do. Wherever you are, as we begin to clap for you, I count five, you should be here. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. One, those coming from outside, please, protocol, help them, clear the way for them so that they come quickly. Quickly. Two, Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Run to Jesus Christ, overflow. One, two, three, four, everywhere, please, quickly. Three. Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. 
he that did not withhold his only son but offer him freely how much more with him shall he give us all things keep coming three four five praise god if you're coming join them quickly those of you here in the front i salute you i congratulate you while the rest are making their way coming please wherever you are run come catch up quickly quickly are you rushing please help us so that we can be very fast we need to attend to people after service i like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly say this passionately say this sincerely say lord jesus i believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight i have heard your word and i believe in you i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that jesus is lord over my life i believe that god raised him from the dead and i declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i pray for you that you will know the lord like never before I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. I appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. I appreciate them quickly. Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 